Uh oh, Nvidia and AMD could be in for some big trouble. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Devoom and their Pixel 64. The Pixel 64 is a really cool pixel art display that's great for showing your favorite pictures, GIFs, or even just for keeping track of time. What makes the Pixel 64 unique is it's completely customizable, works over Wi-Fi, and can accurately keep track of stats like Twitch followers or even subscribers. Not only that, but it works with Amazon Alexa devices, allowing you to control it just with your voice. So if you're looking for a great pixel art display and you want to support the channel, be sure to click the link in the description below to find out more. So AMD and Nvidia are definitely doing really well right now. I mean, they are selling basically every single graphics card they can possibly make, and with the shortages becoming much better and prices getting to a more reasonable point, well, a lot less people are getting angry with them at the same time, so it's definitely looking good for them. And with the next generation of cards from AMD and Nvidia looking to be a massive performance improvement as much as two times or even more than two times the performance of our current flagship GPUs, people are getting even more excited to buy more AMD and Nvidia graphics cards next time around. But what if I was to tell you, well, actually, they could be in for a heap of trouble depending on what ends up happening with these next generation Intel GPUs because right now, well, Intel's gonna be coming a little bit late to the party and they're gonna be underperforming just a little bit with their current gen GPUs, probably getting somewhere around an RTX 3060 Ti. But if what I'm hearing turns out to be true and Intel's gonna be rushing out their next generation GPUs with way, way higher performance, well, yeah, Nvidia and AMD could be in for some serious trouble because guys, this is looking like it could be some really, really fast graphics cards that we're gonna be seeing out of Intel's next generation of GPUs. Now, a lot of this information I'm gonna be talking about comes from a videocards.com article, so let's go ahead and read what they had to say about it, and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. So according to video cards, they say, quote, a while ago, thanks to an Intel test driver that the company accidentally published, we learned that the company's working on a next-gen XE HPG architecture called Battle Mage, internally referred to as Elasti. One of the listed configurations mentions ELG underscore X4, which would imply a four-tile configuration of the next-gen graphics processor. At this moment, we don't know Battle Mage's specs or how it will stack up against AMD and Nvidia, but the company did officially confirm it will be targeting the higher enthusiast tier in the GPU market, later to be followed by Celestial reaching as high as Ultra Enthusiast segment. Battle Mage is not launching till 2023 or 2024, but there is a chance it will become available as RTX 4090 and 7900 XT are still on the market. And in fact, some even more juicy information was leaked over on Twitter by the user Redfire where he said, quote, in each configuration below, it would have the corresponding amount of FP32 ALUs. One tile would be 5,120 shaders, which he estimates would be plus 25% over the current flagship Arc Alchemist GPU. Two tiles would be 10,240 shaders, which he actually estimates would be 2.5 times higher, which is absolutely incredible. And then even more impressive, the four tile version would be 20,480 shaders or five times the amount of the flagship Arc Alchemist GPU, which is really, really impressive. And then he goes on to say that the two tile configuration is actually probably going to be the most likely as it currently stands. And I definitely do have to agree with him there. They could definitely go ahead and make that four tile version. We'll talk about just how powerful that really would be. But even a two tile version of a Battle Mage GPU is going to be a really, really big improvement over the current flagship stuff that we're going to be getting. In fact, if we go ahead and take a look at the rumors, which are suggesting that maybe the Arc Alchemist GPU will be as fast as possibly a 3060 Ti. Well, what we do know is that the 3090 Ti is almost twice as fast as that. And what we also know is that the next generation GPUs, a mid-tier one, is going to be roughly on par with something like a 3090 Ti. So Intel's going to have to get something that's at least twice as powerful to just stay in the same position that they're at. But if they do put out a GPU that's 2.5 times as powerful at the very minimum, which I do believe is going to be the case, well, then that actually is going to put them more on par with something not like a 4060 Ti, but more like a 4070 Ti. And in fact, if things get a really big IPC jump, we could even potentially be talking about something like a 4080 competitor, which is a massive jump over their current situation and definitely some really good news for gamers and is going to be a big thorn in the side of AMD and Nvidia, especially if the price is right. But if we talk about a four tile version, if they do end up actually making a 20,000 shader version of a Battle Mage card, then yeah, that thing is actually going to have more shaders than even a 4090 or 4090 Ti or 7900 XT. It will be the biggest GPU on the market. Now, is it going to scale that well? I don't know, but it would actually put them in competing terms with something like a 4090 or 7900 XT. It would be in that same general area, and that would be a big deal and definitely be bad news for AMD and NVIDIA. Now, honestly, guys, 
I do think that a four tile version is likely going to be saved for something like Celestial or their third generation of cards, but if they do go ahead and get Battle Mage out as fast as humanly possible and we do get it maybe like mid 2023 rather than late 2023, then they could actually have a decent response to AMD and Nvidia's next generation of GPUs and we're definitely going to have a lot more competition than we currently have right now, which is definitely a great thing for gamers. Honestly, maybe they'll even do a three tile version and I think that would put them in a really, really good spot. But either way you slice, it looks like next generation Intel is definitely going to be a lot more competitive and honestly guys, I'm just excited to see their first generation come out this year as well because you know what? Having a third person in the whole GPU space is definitely going to be a great thing for gamers and I just can't wait to see what the final performance looks like. Now one more story I really wanted to cover quickly here guys is the 6950 XT because we actually got some information on the pricing of this thing. If you don't know, it's going to be AMD's replacement for the 6900 XT and it is going to be their new fastest GPU at least until the 7000 series arrives. Now this thing, unfortunately guys, if you're wondering, the price is looking really, really bad. It was listed online on a retailer for Australian over $3,200, which does translate to about $2,400 US. And honestly, at that price, I'm going to say definitely a hard pass on this. You can currently get a 6900 XT for $1,000. So honestly, even $1,000 for a 6950 XT, I'd be saying no, because within six months, this thing is going to be completely obsolete. So hey, I'll tell you this, if you can find a 6950 XT for under a thousand bucks, yeah, maybe buy it. But other than that, I'd say try and find maybe something like a 3080 12 gigabyte or 6800 XT for far, far cheaper. But hey, that's just what I think. How fast do you think Intel's next generation of GPUs is really going to be? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.